To talk about the 10th anniversary of the uh, Asia campus in Singapore, we're joined by Henri-Claude de Bettigny and by Honor de Meyer. You were the founding dean of uh, the Asia campus, Honor, and Henri-Claude de Bettigny, you were the founder of the EuroAsia Centre. It was the EuroAsia Centre that was the precursor to the Asia campus. Can you tell us about the genesis of that? Well, the genesis is that um, when I joined INSEAD, I realized that um, in Europe uh, there was a shortage of knowledge about Japan and about Asia. And uh, as a business school, uh, leading business school already at that time, we were building up this leadership. I realized that uh, it was a responsibility to make sure that what we teach really reflects the world as it is. And therefore, because I anticipated the development of Japan and Asia Pacific and China eventually, I thought it was very important to try to build up progressively some excellence and competence that we could share with those who come to study at INSEAD. It took some years. It, it, it was uh, hard work to convince uh, the uh, decision-making um, um, <coughs> process uh, within INSEAD. But eventually, uh, thanks to uh, Claude Janssen, uh, who is now honorary chairman, thanks to Claude Rameau also, who gave uh, much uh, support uh, to this, uh, we were um, given the possibility to create this center. And progressively, a team was built. A team was built uh, which um, included uh, <coughs> uh, Professor Philippe Lasser and Professor Choute, and then there was a third professor, uh, Bionic Conway. And, and progressively, through activities, we increased the volume. And at that time, uh, Arnoux became very interested in, um, uh, Professor de Meyer became very interested in what we were uh, doing in Asia, and uh, contributed very significantly to the enhancement of our activities. At that time, you know, in the year 1980 to 1988, um, we organized the programs in, a, in the ASEAN region. Uh, at that time, ASEAN was not as big as it is today, but um, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, and obviously in Singapore. But that, that was primarily executive education at that stage, and doing it in hotels. Th that's right. At that time, you were right. At that time, we were uh, doing uh, all those programs uh, either uh, with other institutions, but in most of the cases, we were doing them uh, in a uh, hotel. And, in the region and, and, and therefore this became um, when the volume increased uh, we realized that something needed to be done and that at that time that uh, Arnoux who had already spent a fair amount of time in the commuting between Europe and Asia um, took the leadership to uh, try uh, with Gabriela Wawini who was uh, the, my successor in the Euro Asia Center but uh, to develop uh, this feasibility study in the 90s, mid 90s and eventually uh, to uh, be uh, the, the origin of uh, this uh, uh, campus in, uh, in Singapore, which he came to build and which he came to run. But at what stage, though, did it become the notion of a fully-fledged campus with faculty at the campus? Well, when we realized that the development of the activities of the Eurasia Centre were so sizable, uh, obliging us to commute between uh, Europe and Asia. Uh, we also had more visibilities. We had developed some case material and some teaching materials. Uh, we realized that uh, we had to try to embody this and to uh, make it easier for the faculty to have an institution uh, locally. Now, what kind of institution? Should it be a full campus? Or should it be, uh, and what would be the positioning as compared to Fontainebleau? That was very critical the discussion and the decision-making process. But at that time, Arnoux was in charge, and uh, he was the one to uh, influence the faculty, manage the implementation of the feasibility study, and then come here to try to erect the building and then uh, to achieve what we see today. Arno, as the, uh, the founding dean of uh, the Asia campus, how did you manage to convince the faculty? Because presumably there was a great deal of resistance within uh, the faculty for this particular move. That was correct. But um, let me just go back for a second to where the idea um, originated. Uh, Henri Claude uh, had been great in actually getting me interested in Asia and offering me opportunities to understand what was going on in Asia by, first of all, in the 80s, uh, giving me the opportunity to teach in the programs 
uh, but also bringing me into contact with companies here, providing me opportunities for doing some applied research, etc. And so uh, I got very interested in what's going on in Asia and then probably became natural that at some moment in time, in 1995, uh, I was asked to become the director uh, of the EuroAsia Center. And at that moment, the EuroAsia Center was doing very well in terms of selling programs and actually getting attention for its publications and its work um, throughout the world. So this was the time that Asia Pacific started becoming very popular. Southeast Asia yeah. was doing very well. And we had programs like Strategies for Asia Pacific, Human Resource Management in Asia, which were really unique programs. Very few, if any other universities were offering this type of high-class research-based programs. And so there was a, a strong interest in it. Up to a point that NCAT said, said, but this becomes so big, what do we do with this? And that's where I was asked by the board to do a feasibility study of what this was possible. We looked at, in the beginning, 11 cities. We looked at different formats, as Henri Claude was referring to, uh, joint ventures, uh, partnerships with universities, and uh, a subsidiary, uh, uh, independent campus. We looked at many different um, opportunities. And then we found, actually, in the Singapore government, a good sparing partner. And I would say that the success of the project was actually that we both had our strategies, which were nicely aligned, but we were independent from each other. We, we did not come here because the Singapore government paid us a lot of money. The Singapore government did not work with INSEAD because we were the only one. It was simply that we found each other as real partners. Now, once we were there, that we knew what we wanted to do, we had found a partner in the Singapore government, it was, as you say, important to convince the faculty. And for obvious reasons, it was a very big and risky project for INSEAD. First of all, uh, no other university in the, uni in the world had ever, of, of any significance, had ever done a project like this. So there was no uh, role model. On top of that, while quite a few people thanks to the work of the EuroAsia Center and Henri Claude, had gotten to know Asia, there was still a huge group of, mm. of INSEAD faculty yes. who had never been here, yeah. who had no clue what Asia was all about, and for whom Asia was perhaps associated with, with communist China. I mean, and I go back to the mid-90s, right, with, uh, with, with dictatorial regimes in, in Myanmar, uh, riots in Indonesia, uh, etc. So, for whom the, the idea of Asia was not necessarily that attractive. And then, thanks to uh, the support by Antonio Borges, um, who at that moment was dean, we did something that probably was very instrumental in convincing the faculty. We took two groups of faculty to do a tour of the potential sites, Hong Kong, Kuala Lumpur, and here. And we actually exposed them to universities, business people, governments, etc. And this group of two times 10 people, 20 people in total, went back with the conviction that this was feasible, this was doable. It changed the mindset it of the faculty. Yeah. They were very instrumental. Yeah. Yeah. And so at that moment, there was a gradual support for the faculty. Now, then you can be sit sitting out here as a project manager, and you can have people like Henri Claude and, and Helmut Schutte who were supportive and say, we're you willing to help there. But what was really also important was to bring a number of other people um, who were not convinced and not seen to be convinced uh, to the campus here. And uh, I guess I was lucky that after lots of talking and lots of arm twisting and uh, uh, mm, of, uh, Inducement inducements yeah. and whatever, <laughs> that we can convince six faculty m s members to take the plunge and come here in August uh, 99. Uh, most of them with trepidation, many of them with the idea like we do this for two years and then we go back to Fontainebleau. Uh, I see that all of them are still here after 10 years, so we must have done something right. But it was really convincing by demonstration, convincing by showing people, convincing by mm. one by one by bringing people here. Now, once the campus was going, it proved itself. It, uh, yeah. it, it, it and it became very attractive. Yeah. Uh, and now, as you as you know very well, uh, it's easy to uh, have a faculty coming. And in fact, we have now nearly what 50, 50 professors full time here. 
So this demonstrates that uh, you know, the difficulties and the challenge that uh, Arnoux had initially have, uh, in fact, somewhat disappeared because it became very attractive to come to Singapore. Well, we met something like uh, 10 years ago. I was working at CNBC. You spoke at the Foreign Correspondents Association about uh, the setting up of INSEAD in uh, Singapore. Um, 10 years on, do you think it's been an unqualified success? I'm an academic, so there is always be on the one hand and on the other hand. Mm -hmm. But I would say it's 99% an unqualified success. Uh, the fact that uh, the faculty is willing to stay here and do research here, the fact that uh, students vote with their feet and want to study on the Singapore campus. And, and 400 of them. And yeah. you know, um, the fact that meaningful research is on Asia is coming out of, of, uh, uh, out of Asia, uh, the Singapore campus of uh, INSEAD. The fact that we uh, have a very successful series of um, uh, executive programs and I would say the icing on the cake or, or whatever is the fact that we now have a PhD program here, which was beyond the dreams we had in the beginning. Uh, all the other things were perhaps part of the business plan. The PhD program seemed so far out for us that we had not put that in the original business plan. The fact that all of that has come together and that the Asia campus of INSEAD has really become a force makes it for me an unqualified success. So what would you say is your hope for uh, INSEAD in Asia? I think there are three dimensions which we should try to enhance over the next 10 years. The first one is to deepen, strengthen, and enlarge our expertise, knowledge, accumulated uh, <coughs> experience in Asia, so that we become really one of the center or the center which has the best uh, knowledge and where uh, academic other academic uh, government official uh, uh, corporate uh, come to 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 learn from us the, and particularly on china the second uh, dimension is a uh, <coughs> it seemed to me you know we we had uh, today uh, through the, the presentation by the forthcoming dean this uh, reflection about uh, criticism made to business school, w which over the last five, even seven, eight years, have been the object of a number of uh, criticisms, some very justified, some less justified, as it was said. And I think uh, that invites us to think about the kind of men and women that uh, we contribute to produce. And uh, that will, uh, should invite us to rethink the role of the business school and to say that uh, maybe the parad dominant paradigm that we have been teaching needs to be challenged and uh, we need uh, maybe to replace it with the paradigms which uh, integrate much more the sustainability dimension, the multi-stakeholder, the, uh, uh, um, the willingness to become more a corporate citizen uh, for the corporation and so forth. So in a way, to rethink the core of our education and the key message that we try and the skill that we develop. And then the third, I would hope that over the next 10 years we don't lose this European dimension because I think that's very much part of the uh, uh, history of uh, INSEAD and uh, to let it uh, disappear to become uh, global but uh, we losing its roots from Europe, I think that uh, would be uh, detrimental to the long term of the institution. I think the European and uh, the Anglo-Saxon and the Asian have a cultural identity which needs to be protected and preserved. And it is a fertilization of those cultural identity which can contribute to create these men and women that I'm referring to. Oh no, I don't know if you've got anything I to I can add. only agree with what Henri Claude said and reinforce the point about keeping the European roots so that it instead can be a bridge between East and West. Uh, I fully agree with that because INSET actually has their unique assets that very few other ones yeah. have <coughs> and actually it should, it can keep that differentiation. The other thing that I uh, hope is that it will be c remain a source of innovation for the business yeah. school world as it has been over the last 50 years. Uh, I wish it for the next 50 years, the, 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 the dynamism and the energy to remain the innovator. And thirdly, um, I can only think that in Seattle in 10 years from now will be at least twice the size here in Singapore of what it is today. Honor de Maire and Henri Claude de Bettany, thanks for joining us.